three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting film journey here on Inside Movies Galore. I am uh, one of your hosts, uh, but uh, I believe this is the third episode, at least, of the new year, uh, where we um, have a themed month where uh, we randomly ch uh, chose some choices that, uh, uh, that ended up going under uh, 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 th films that were either had to do with the blues or had blue in the title or something on that nature. So, uh, but uh, why don't I hand this over to uh, our good friend Brandon here uh, to tell us what movie he had us watch this week. So today's movie is the 1987 film Ernest Goes to Camp by director John R. Cherry III. Uh, this is uh, one of the earlier Ernest films. Um, I think that uh, it might be the first like full one if you don't count um, the, uh, what was it? Uh, My Family Album, I think, is the very first one that he did. But I think that this is the first official Ernest film. So we've got uh, basically Ernest, who is a wannabe camp counselor, currently a handyman at a summer camp. And he is put, and thanks to an incident, he is put in charge of the second chance ch children to try and give them a foot up during the summer. So uh, this is one of those fun films, and uh, I guess we'll go and see uh, everybody's first impressions. So let's start with Dave. Is this your first time ever seeing Ernest Goes to Camp? Uh, I thought it was, um, but um, I actually remember bits and pieces of, of it for some reason. Uh, so I must have caught, like, bits and pieces of it, like years ago i just didn't think that i'd seen it uh be, because for a long time i thought i i thought and looked at, at him and he just looked stupid as fuck um so <laughs> i didn't chance actually watching a full film by, uh, by by him because he seemed to irritate me um even before like catching glimpses of, of, of him um but um now that i'm older and i've seen a lot of films um i can deal with him a little bit more it's just some of his antics i don't know they they still somewhat irritate me but um i think i've come around a, a little bit more and Honestly, um, this one isn't bad. Um, it's got some good moments. It's got um, it's got a moral to it, and uh, it's kind of cool. The gadgets that they uh, uh, that they put together out of the school bus. So, um, I thought it was cute. Some uh, real for, ancient stuff <laughs> for uh, for an earnest film so um i'm glad that i uh, finally got to see it in its entirety and uh I, I guess i'm looking forward to eventually checking out the rest of his filmography eventually down uh, down, uh, down the road and i have seen ernest saves christmas thanks to brandon so already because we did it one year well, thanks to Jake. <laughs> oh, thanks to Jake? 
Yes. Oh, thank you, Jake. <laughs> so, you know, this is our second Ernest film we've covered. Yes, we covered Ernest Saves Christmas one year. And uh, Jake is actually related to Jim Varney. So, <laughs> uh, so let's talk. Oh, really? really? Yes. Uh, I'm sure he'll say more about it when he comes on. Um, so, Ron, uh, was this your first time seeing Ernest Goes to Camp? First, last, and only. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a fan. Uh, like Dave said, uh, he just annoys the hell out of me. Uh, you can't fix stupid, and he's just completely, completely mor moronic. Absolutely stupid. The movie is very predictable. Um, just when he got his ass kicked, that's the only funny part in the movie. You know, I, I love comedy, but yeah, I just don't find him at all funny. Uh, he's just sad. And, and, and as, as stupid as he is, the cooks are even worse. I, I don't know how they managed to, to take the, the dumbest character and, and then make two characters even, even, even worse, but they did. And, uh, yeah, the whole, uh, I mean, yeah, it has a good story and, and, uh, you want to root for the kids. Um, well, you know, they're going to win in the end anyways. I mean, but, uh, you know, it just, like I said, it's just not my cup of tea at all. I just, uh, think he's just a complete idiot. And, uh, hopefully I'll never have to watch another Ernest movie. We'll see. <laughs> And it is my first Ernest movie, and uh, yeah. See, now I've got to get you to watch all of them. And, uh, <laughs> you uh, want to torture me. <laughs> all right, but in any case, uh, Tammy, is this your first time watching Ernest Goes to Camp? No, I remember when all these came out and everything, and, you know, everybody thought it was funny to do that. Face, you know, when he made when he's by the toilet and he does that ew face, you know, everybody thought it was funny to do that. Like every time something was ew, you know, to the point where it was just like, okay, that's enough now. You're not funny anymore, you know. But when I, it, I was 15 years old when it came out, so of course, you know, everybody thought. You know, thought it was funny, and you know they made fun of. Of course, everybody made fun of Ernest, and it it had its day. I mean, it wasn't bad to rewatch it. It just, you know, like I said, to me, it had its day, and its day is over. But it wasn't that bad. I. I've definitely seen worse. So. So, uh, Forrest, was this your first time seeing Ernest Goes to Camp? Uh, yes, it was. Actually, this is the, this is the, my, the uh, my first time seeing this, seeing this movie and uh, the second Ernest movie I've watched overall. Uh, prior to this, the only Ernest movie I've seen was Ernest, Go Ernest Saves Christmas, which I saw probably maybe twice as a kid and didn't see again until I joined you go until I joined this podcast. And uh, I'll admit, I just never had that emotional attachment to, that like I didn't grow up, grow up or have a lot of emotional attachment to Ernest the way I had with say Pee Wee Herman as like, as a kid, I just didn't have that. I don't have the nostalgic uh, like Ernest doesn't hope have that nostalgic value for me. Um, and as far as summer camp movies, I mean, I've watched, cause I do like to watch movies set in summer camp. Like, uh, meatballs, uh, Wet Hot American Summers, Camp Nowhere, um, Heavyweights. But uh, and I guess as far as summer camp comedies go, co summer camp comedies go, co summer camp comedies go. Um, I mean, it's all right. I mean, it's not. It's not bad. It has its moments. But um, I don't know. It just was not. I just found it like kind of just kind of nothing special. You know, nothing special. Just kind of average. Just very average. Um, although I do, although I gotta give Jim Gar Varney credit, he does have a lot of, uh, a lot of that manic, like as Ernest, he's got a lot of that manic energy 
a uh, lot very very physical you know very good uh phys very good with physical comedy uh even if he yeah grant although i guess he although i guess he does all men he does do quite a bit of mugging too but uh but uh yeah i don't know i just, i just, but, i mean it was okay it was okay but no i wasn't like a huge fan i wasn't a huge fan Okay, well, uh, I, of course, first watched this when I was very young. And it's good that I can be on here seeing as... Oh, wait, before I get that, oh, let me add Jake on there then. So, Jake, so far, uh, pretty much there's been a, a bunch of people who've disliked the movie. Uh, did you like the movie when you watched it? Oh, wow. So, yeah, apologies for being late all. I would have been curious to hear some of those uh <laughs> thoughts um so so you want my first impression huh yep, yep um well suffice it to say this is nowhere near my first time with camp kikiki uh this is um absolutely a movie that I grew up on. Um, I had, I can definitely say that this one and um, Ernest Saves Christmas were pretty much, you know, ones I grew up on, you know, you could almost say from a youngish time. Uh <laughs> And of course, I had seen, uh, I couldn't even guess how many times I've seen this one. Uh, probably a couple dozen times, at least when I was a kid, a few times over the years. It's not one I pop in regularly, but it's one that, you know, every now and then. And um, I. I can see why some people may not embrace it the same way I do. <laughs> but on the other hand, blasphemy. <laughs> that no one seems to like. But <laughs> um, so basically, I think I covered a lot of it because um, we did Ernest Saves Christmas, right? Am I remembering that correctly? That yeah, that was, yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah, that that was the previous one. Um, I have a long, long history uh, with Ernest. Uh, this character uh, created by uh, Jim Varney and... Uh, I my dad always claimed that we were related. I don't know that that has ever been substantiated, and if so, it's a distant relation. But still, uh, it's fun to think. I'm it's sorry. Certainly... I would say you What's got some it? homework to do. You got, you got some homework to do. Um. Yeah. Um, like I said, I know my mom tried really hard to get into that whole uh, genealogy thing, and I. I don't think she found anything that disproved yeah, it, but she every was a family has an idiot. What's that? <laughs> so every family has an has an idiot you know, in it. <laughs> I'll admit, well, I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a huge fan. I wasn't a huge Ernest fan. I did like Jim Varney as as Slinky Dog in the Toy Story movies. Yeah, uh, and he did have other quality uh, roles over the years. He, you know, he was perfectly cast. Whatever you thought of the movie. Uh, he was perfectly cast in that Beverly Hillbillies remake. Oh yeah, it's Jed Clampett. He was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was good in that. Like I said, he's. I mean, I he actually he wasn't too bad in that. I agree. Yeah. I, I before you know, before you came on the show, I mentioned that he, he Jim Varney actually is a very was a very good physical was great was a very good physical com uh, comedian. Oh yeah, no question about it. And it's like as far as yeah, physical comedy, uh, and apparently. The Michael Eisner of Disney saw that and wanted this film to be even more slapstick than it was because he apparently saw Ernest as sort of a goofy type character, which I, I guess it's glad, I'm glad that Cooler Heads prevailed and they didn't quite go that far. 
Um, but more on that later. But um, like I said, I grew up with these movies. I love them. I think they're a lot of fun. The, is the film are brilliant? You know, is it like a high art? No. Um, is it uh, even something that has aged all that well? That's debatable. Uh, parts of it have definitely not aged as well as we should probably like. I would say um, all the Native American, the Native American stuff aged like milk. Some of it, yes. Um, of course, it, with the, the fact that the chief is played by a man who uh, is actually Sicilian, um, was one of those. In all, in all fairness, he was delusional and did believe that he truly was Native American. He he had actually at the by the end he he truly believed it at the end. <laughs> well, and I believe, and I had read that apparently the Native American community did award him as giving uh, as as doing a, a fair job of representation, even though he wasn't, you know. It, like it could it could be a lot worse let's put it that way <laughs> um does it could be Milton Berle and red face and F2. Could, what's that I said could have been it could have been Milton Berle and red face like an F troop yeah I mean there were so many much worse examples over the years even even up to and including the time that this came out um but definitely earlier than that there were some much worse examples um but and and yes, the movie does have plot holes you could drive a semi through. Um, <laughs> but then a lot of summer camp movies do. <laughs> um, I, I yeah, so it's it's an uneven film, and I can understand how if you don't have nostalgia going for you, um, it may be harder. Like Ernest Saves Christmas is it to me just seems much harder to dislike. On a, on a basic level, um, this one I can see more why people who didn't grow up with it might dislike it, but I definitely grew up with it. And so for me, this is a, this is a classic and I, I was certainly happy to, to give it another visit. Uh. <laughs> for me, this is probably one of the, what I consider the four must see Ernest films. I think that, and Indeed. really the three, but I count Ernest Goes to Jail in that was, just outside. I was going to say pretty much all the ones that Disney, pretty much all the ones that Disney did, right? I'm guessing, right? Because you've pretty, got yeah. this, one, this one, Ernest Goes to Jail, uh, Ernest Scares Stupid, and Ernest Saves Christmas. And those um, were all the ones that, those were the first four. Those were the original four and the ones that yes. were produced by mm -hmm. Disney. They were also the ones that got theatrical releases. I think almost all, if not all, the others were straight to video. Yeah, yeah, like after the I think yeah, Ride right the Den and uh, Goes to School were, were the last two to get theatrical releases, but they oh, were okay. Disney, and then the last three went straight to video. And you know, uh, Hey Vern, it's my family album was technically the first uh, Ernest movie. I don't necessarily count that because it wasn't really as coherent. It was more shorts thrown together. But um, this one, uh, to me, uh, does have a special spot for me. Um, I used to watch this a lot with my father when I was growing up. Uh, he he loved the turtle paratroopers. For some reason, that just always stuck in his mind. That's from so, the so this one always does have a special place for me, nostalgia-wise. And we've talked about the idea that sometimes nostalgia can um, can make uh, a movie uh, that is not so good. Well, I think we had that with the uh, Scrooge, uh, with saying that Scrooge is actually yeah. not good, or that National Lampoons is no good. Uh, potentially, mm -hmm. that nostalgia is the only reason why people. I would say the go I would say the go I would say usually when it comes to like that, comes to that debate, like the yeah. Goonies and uh, Home Alone come to mind. And I think that there's a yeah. portion to that, but then again, I think it's still down to preference. I do think that there are people who may never have seen this movie who would like it on the first go round. It's just, it's a, uh, again, it's all about people's prep because that's what movies are. They're art. Um, uh, like I know I've been on many of these that I can say that I was the one saying I didn't like the film <laughs> and others saying that they loved it. But this one does mm -hmm. have a place to me. Um, yes, there are some things that are problematic, especially in the native American section. 
But otherwise, it was a pretty decent movie as far as that goes. Ernest movies for me always, except for Slam Dunk Ernest, always. I mean, uh, I say Ernest goes to Africa. God, I can only imagine what happens in that. <laughs> that is not a good film, but it's still better than Slam Dunk Ernest. <laughs> they they use a boa constrictor and call it a cobra. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um I, I do feel like uh I, it's rare that i go and watch an earnest movie that it doesn't make me smile at the end or feel better matter of fact uh this past week it's uh it was one of the things that i could say was one of the few highlights of last week for me was watching this film again uh there's something about watching a film that that you've loved as a child that just really uh kind of like that chicken soup for the for the mind sort of thing comfort food Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I agree with that. So that is, uh, so that is something that uh, for me, I just I, I've enjoyed it. I always enjoyed the acting. I liked uh, how they get together. We didn't quite get the same duo in this one that we had in our Saves Christmas with, but we uh, because we were missing one half of that comedy duo. With are you uh, talking about Chuck and Bobby and all yeah. the other films? Yeah, this one it's uh, Jake and. Um, and um what's his face eddie yeah and so, we had half of the duo <laughs> yeah but you know it's still a fun film uh, i like watching it most of the time when it's on and um i guess we'll move forward it's actually one that's harder to see uh because most of the blue most of the dvds and blu-rays are they're, I think they're still available, but that's the only way you're going to get to see it because it's not on streaming, and that's kind of sad. Um, yeah, which is kind of well, it's kind of weird, especially because like Disney Plus has, has has saves has uh, saves Disney Christmas only has saves Christmas. That's the only one they decided to put up there, <laughs> right? And so, um... <laughs> oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, um, I I just I found it amusing, like. Um, the history of why this even ended up on touchstone uh i just found that really amusing was apparently there was a a big parade uh the disney mickey was like the parade marshal and uh michael eisner and jeffrey katzenberg happened to be in attendance and ernest was part of the parade and when he went by the crowd went wild and they were like, who's this guy who got more applause than Mickey? <laughs> I just thought that was kind of hilarious. And apparently they, they went and uh, made a deal very quickly to get this guy on their side. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then they dropped him as soon as scared, stupid flop. Uh, yeah. And uh, one of the things that, that is to be said about uh, Jim Varney is he is one of the few actors out there that had a really good reputation mm-hmm. for uh, being essentially um, what's that for, for being one of the nicest people out there. And that's uh that's something rare that you see yeah, an yeah. actor that's got such a reputation. He and Robin Williams were actually very good friends as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is too bad that uh, really his heavy smoking habit was his end. Yeah, um, actually, I, yeah, actually, it was I found this old New York Times article because I because I guess apparently back back in the late eighties and early nineties, people were drawing parallels between him and or drawing comparisons between him and uh, Pee Wee Pee Wee Herman. You know, in a, both people in it, uh, a lot of times they appeared in public in character, um, and like you know, they, they appeared in character that uh, like they couldn't separate the act that uh, like you know if you if you if it was an actor or a real person, or yeah, yeah. And I um, and Jim Varney said that he did have that he was concerned that he might end up like Pee that he would end up like Pee Wee Herman, yeah, who mm-hmm. had just been busted at the time, who had just been gotten. But we just been busted at the time the article was written. He um, he expressed he expressed reservations a few times over the years about being typecast. The uh, As Ernest, apparently yeah. he originally didn't want to do this movie because he was afraid that Ernest would never that he would always never be simply the shadow of Ernest. Because he was and a then, theatrical actor, he he was yeah. uh, he's probably one of the one of the great character actors. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it is 
kind of sad that he got mostly typecast, but he did get some yeah. opportunities outside. Well, and also because he, you know, he died, you know, a little younger than he might have. Again, you know, he was, you know, again getting voice work, and you know, Toy Story is a good example. Yep. Uh, he also was doing a lot of songwriting at the end. He gets to sing in this movie. Um, yep. But at the end, he apparently had written a number of songs with Vern Gosden. They were close friends. And um, you know what I mean? It, <laughs> what's that? I said, know what I mean? <laughs> well, exactly. But um, but yeah, I, I always thought. And again, you know, the growing up being told that this guy was our a distant cousin, uh, I, I took it kind of personal. Um, I always was really happy when the in memoriam for the Academy, when the year Jim Varney passed, that they did not put Ernest up. I think they put up Jed Clampett as as the image, and I was I was always pleased by that because I was like he probably would have been very upset if they had put Ernest up for that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but well, not that he's you know he obviously loved the role, but he you know he. Some people do get defined a little too closely by one thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's uh, get started with this. Um, yep. So we have ourselves uh, this camp, Camp Kikiki, and it's starting off like as normal. All the kids getting in, and they're starting for another big summer. And we get introduced mm -hmm. to Ernest working on the sign, uh, you know, doing his little mm -hmm. monologue to explain his uh, his reasons for being there and what he wants because he wants to be a counselor one day because and that's one thing i do find fun about the earnest movies he's always a blue collar guy and his his goals in life are very simple well, it also he starts off with that so basically a safety first monologue but... yeah. <laughs> which is which you can tell where the problem is as soon as... it reminds me of that tim allen neighbor who just had the nose over the fence wilson wilson <laughs> At least yeah. the, uh, the first little bit, because he's... Fine. Wilson was intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he, he ends up, uh, you know, doing some chores, and apparently uh, gets the gets a very the very worst toilet to work on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, where, where the toilet not only draws the plunger in, but apparently is broken on many levels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's a vindictive petty toilet yes <laughs> blows up later um <laughs> <laughs> but uh essentially you know they get involved in this and you can tell that Ernest is kind of picked on by most of the people counselors uh several of the dickish uh, uh camp goers and uh, they are, of course, given an opportunity in this camp to host the Second Chance group, which is a bunch of uh, kids in juvie that, uh, I guess, are being given a chance uh, to go to summer camp with hopes that they will improve on some of their, you know, social skills and be less, uh, you know, delinquenty. <laughs> and Ernest was charged to also pick them up, which... Again, I'm not sure why you would trust Ernest with a bus, uh, but they did, and and to, to all fairness, he did get there and get them. <laughs> and 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 there, it is clear that one, this camp is very short staffed, and two, um, that the camp manager is probably not the best at his job. <laughs> He's very laid back about the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> Well, at least nobody got hurt. <laughs> no, so what do y'all think about the uh, setting in general? I mean, it's a summer camp. It's summer, I mean, it's a summer camp yeah. uh, in the book. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, like any number of summer um, camp movies you've seen over the years. Um, exactly. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean it it's pretty representative of uh, how a summer yeah. camp seems to be somewhat run especially in the early 90s you know uh, mm -hmm. it, this was supposedly at the time a uh, this was from 1987 correct 87 yeah so 
late 80s early 90s uh, 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 uh summer ca uh, camp and you you've got your i mean you've got your jerks uh, uh, uh your jerkish kids um, you've got pranks and all sorts of hijinks going on yeah so right. it's not nothing new and also uh, also uh you know encounters with uh with can with wildlife that kind of go right. that go that go that go wrong or call comic or go comically wrong. No, another notable thing about this camp, though, that sets it apart a little bit, aside from the uh, bumbling handyman slash groundskeeper, uh, is the mad scientists that run the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you know, he's trying experimental yes, food. <laughs> you have uh, Jake and Eddie who have this uh, movie-long obsession with creating a, a dish known as Eggs Erroneous, which... Uh, which looks like guacamole. <laughs> I've always loved that part. It's like the whole... Uh, well, they use powdered the, uh, eggs as the eggs for Eggs yeah. Erroneous. <laughs> eggs Erroneous, made with I hate that herbs. They, him, uh, uh, they basically force him to, uh, to yeah. eat it, you know? How about the chicken pot pie? Chicken I, pot well, yeah, they pie. create that machine where they, yeah, <laughs> chicken pot pie, yes. But uh, I do love how suggestible they are. It's like um, Ernest says something about yellow modeling clay, and then uh, Jake's like, that's it. That's it. That's the secret ingredient to eggs or owners. Yellow it's actually, modeling it's actually clay. kids that said it. Yeah. The kids said that, though. The one that said it doesn't smell that bad is uh, Hetty uh, Clay. Right. Uh, you know, Marlon Clay. But yeah, it's like uh, those it two, does. you know, those kids are going to have some uh, pretty questionable nutrition. Uh. <laughs> well, and you have a, um, you also end up having a, of course, you've got the camp doctor. And the camp doctor is, uh, I can't. I don't think is she uh does she have any Native American heritage? I don't think she does. But uh is what? The camp doctor. What was your uh, question? And was she did she have any Native American heritage? I couldn't I, figure I, it I out. Think, I think she was Latina. Well the character uh, does. Yeah, the character actress, does. I'm not sure. I think yeah, I, I, I think it's Racimo. I think it's I think it's a Spanish. 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 Yeah. yeah. And of course her grandfather owns the land and mm -hmm. he's kind of uh teaching these can people, you own trees uh and the you know in the uh, way of the stone was it the stone the arrow and the uh the, the blade the stone and the arrow yeah and they show it they show the reenactment of how it used to be when they would go uh new uh new braves right at the very beginning at the very opening of it where you had the guy going through the ritual when do they have any braves left which this is one of the things about the movie that absolutely in no way, shape, or form would have been controversial in the 80s, but yeah. that kind of is now. Slightly. <laughs> the idea of a summer camp that models itself on what is perceived to be the stories of the people who used to live there. Um Mm -hmm. In a way, I mean, Kikiki is set up to honor the memory of these people, but it completely ignores, like most of these things did, the fact that, well, um, why is it that there's down to just two people in this tribe? And I would say, cause, I would say, that we, because we, because uh, the the, gov the uh, government committed genocide, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah, and this. Uh, of course, the uh, the presented villains in this piece are are strip miners, which of course you know that's a good reason to uh, they're good villains to have, and they are also coming on this. But still, I was say, say when your villain is John Vernon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I well, I wish I will say he was one of the strong for me. He was one of the strong points of the movie. I mean, I, oh yeah, not go wrong with John Vernon being 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 an antagonist, right. I was just curious did anybody here actually go to a summer camp. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. not yeah. I didn't go to, 
I did day camps. I didn't do anything where you stayed all summer, but I, I definitely did day camps. I, I did day camps, and then I did like a week, and then I did this uh, week long uh, summer camp at George Mason University. But uh, but we were sleeping in dorms, not tents or cabins. Yeah, I, I stayed at one for like a week. Although I, um, although I, I worked on Victim, although when I worked on Victim No More a couple of years ago, we 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 stayed like the cast and crew stayed at we stayed at a summer we stayed at a summer camp. I stayed at a camp out in Colorado with my cousins up in the mountains, which at the time that I went to that, I was like 10, 10, 11 years old. And it actually, it was really neat because it was in the mountains in Colorado, you know, so it was quite fun. I think I misstated. I think I did do at least a couple, at least one, maybe a couple that were a week or two weeks. But again, not an all summer one, but there were a couple that were multi-day. It was a fun experience. I enjoyed it. And and I think that anyone who did anything, even on a day camp level, it helps you to appreciate these kind of movies because you kind of like, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like no, I I have I don't know, I have a kind of an obsession with summer like a, maybe not obsession, but like I have a I have a special interest in summer camp movies. Like like I mentioned earlier in the show, like comedies, but also horror and horror movies. Like, because I guess, you know, you know, because I did, because like I said, because I did day camp, I did day camps, I did a week long camp at, at a college campus, but never like a, a summer camp in the woods. Yeah. Uh, I did yeah, college so camps too. Movies, yeah. Yeah. I have the, and I, I feel the same way about high school movies because I didn't go to regular, I didn't go to a regular public high school. Right. Actually, the, uh, I did week long camps at Roanoke College. That's how I ended up going to Roanoke was I had done those uh, week long camps there. <laughs> uh, I'm, was, I'm curious, was that part of the, the UNCG All Arts and Sciences camp? No, it was it was, it was actually a Lutheran camp called Kairos. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, the one I did, George Mason, was part of UNC was part of UNCG's. Uh, it was basically like a tour. It was basically like a touring camp they would do like a week in in uh in virginia a week in north carolina huh sounds fun at various campuses around around that part of the, the part of the country yep, i did uh of course I, I was an eagle scout so i was i camped a lot when i was growing yeah. up and we went to camp shenandoah here that was in the uh, Shenandoah Valley. And there are actually some similarities in a lot of ways uh, to Camp Kikiki in there. A lot of these camps liked to do Indian uh, or Native American theming. Yeah. Uh, I, think and, generally, I think generally with scouts, that was often a thing. Yeah. So to me, this also kind of comes home there because it can it reflects a lot of my own experiences as a as a kid i didn't have we didn't have anybody quite as uh uh off the wall as earnest as somebody trying to be a <laughs> and the food was much better than what they uh than what they obviously were eating i feel um, like that's a trope of, of, of summer camp of like of uh summer camp and pop culture is the food's terrible so what yeah. did y'all think of the kids we had we were introduced to of course the second can chance kids you had the you had the ringleader. You had uh, the you had the brainy kid. You had the klepto kid. You had the one that they said was just too cool, and he always yeah. wore the sunglasses. And you had the runt. Um, right. And then you had the uh, and then you had like the privileged jer uh, privileged uh, jerks who have their summer camp uniform. Yes, mm -hmm. I like the too cool for Ernest and the and the and the second chance kids. Oh yeah, I mean they 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 drop the window on him when he's pulling up at the bus. Right? I mean that's all you need to know about them. Like they're yeah. like they're rotten. They're rotten. They're actually they're 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 spoiled. They're spoiled and rotten. It was funny though. Yeah, true. A, co so, a couple of them do come around at the end and join the the yeah the two assholes do well. like do join them at the end. <laughs> but yeah, they um they pretty much had you know they were like the 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 equivalents of uh. Obviously, you have John Vernon in the film. You got to think about Animal House. You have the equivalents of like the uh, um, 
Kevin Bacon and 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 uh, Niedermeyer and and all of them, you know, <laughs> kind of in there. Um, two notes about the kids, the second chance kids. Crutchfield, the klepto, as Brandon put it, uh, which that was impressive, stealing Ernest's wallet before he even approached them. <laughs> so, yeah, amazing. Uh, he's played by Scott Menville, who apparently has done a lot of voice work, including multiple roles on Teen Titans Go. He plays Robin and a whole bunch of other characters there. Huh. And Jacob Vargas went on to have a long and storied career in film, mostly in the background, but he is still working hard and putting out a lot of stuff. And uh, so it was really cool kind of seeing them way back at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, Luke, Luke Cage, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he, uh, I, I know Jacob Vargas was in Selena. He was... Uh, I recently saw an episode of Psych that he was in. Um, yeah, he's done a few things over the years. Uh, Clueless, the series. That's a series people tend to forget about for some reason. Get Shorty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Get Shorty. That was a fun one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, uh, essentially, we we start off with, uh, they give a count, counselor, Stennis, the... Uh, the job of putting these kids right. And of course he treats them. Well, he treats them like, um, well, like convicts essentially, which I guess they are in some sense, but they're still just kids. So they, they kind of get fed up with it because he ends up uh, throwing the young kid in the water when the young kid can't swim, which Ernest goes in to save him. Um, but the, uh, so they end up, uh, pushing him in the water uh, and getting his leg broken. So Ernest ends up getting the job as counselor uh, to keep them from being sent home. So what did y'all think of counselor Stennis? Do you think he deserved what he, uh, what he did? What he got? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, I like the little kid. What do they call him? Moose or something like that? Yeah. Right. Moose, Mustafa. <laughs> I like Mustafa, him. yeah. And they count counselor should never have thrown him in the water like that. That was wrong. So yeah, yeah, he got what was coming to him. And honestly, uh the kids didn't go out of their way to do anything. They just happened to notice that for some reason the lifeguard stand was barely on the dock and they just pushed. A little bit, and over it went. Which I, I did I, like how they commented, "Is like he's going to learn the Stennis way." <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Oh, uh, but you know that's. Uh, but of course, you had to do that because then Ernest got to do what he was going for, and it's kind of interesting if you look at Ernest in these. His his goals are always to uh, eventually be these mundane positions. Like, an Ernest goes to jail. His biggest dream is to go from being a janitor to a bank clerk, which I guess is a right. is a you know is a leg up. I'm not sure whether yeah. camp handyman to camp counselor is a big step up at all. I, I would think that they're actually two different jobs entirely. To tell you the truth, <laughs> but I think he just wanted to be around the kids, and he wanted that responsibility to be around the kids right. and to do things with them is what the thing was, you know, yeah. whether it was a step up or not. I think that's the way he was looking at it is that he wanted, you know, he wanted to teach the kids, enrich them, show them things, you know, like what not to do to a family of badgers. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, he, he felt like he, uh, he felt like he had things to, that to offer, and that no one uh, would take him seriously, basically. And whatever he lacks in basic common sense and even to a degree intelligence, he definitely makes up for in dedication and hard work. Um, he is, after all, one of only two people there who can communicate with the chief because he actually learned their language. He learned so, the sign. Yes. Oh, his uh, his 
uh, way of methods of cooking hot dogs uh, is <laughs> another thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. what, but that's another thing I've noticed that Ernest and Pee Wee did have similar in a lot of the ways is that they both like to use these kind of Google Weird inventions, uh, yeah. inventions yeah. that uh, would, you know, rotate like this one for the, the camp thing. And if you look at Ernest's room, if you pay attention to it when they go in there, you can see he's got all these little uh, knickknacks and things like that around. So there's a lot of similarities and you get to see a lot of that with uh if you look at his house and any of the movies that they have him in like Ernest Saves Christmas, Ernest Goes to Jail, or even I think Ernest Scared Stupid, you can see a lot of that stuff in the houses. Um that but I think they were all fans of that back in the uh eighties. The the Rugo, I mean shoot, the Goonies used it, a lot of movies mm -hmm. used those type of things back in those days. They just thought it was cool for kids. And granted, it was a cool idea, the little rotisserie thing that he had set up. Although, even before it went haywire on him, there was one glaring flaw. A gas-powered motor right oh, wow. next to an open flame. <laughs> this is Ernest we're talking about here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh of course, also during this time, you've got this uh, mining, strip mining company that they, they see that there's this uh, special ore that they use for the space program. So they're making tons of money on it, but a lot of it, a lot of the vein is underneath the camp. So they really want to strip mine that camp, but the, uh, well, the Native American owner of the camp is like, nope. <laughs> Not mm -hmm. gonna happen. So that's a that's a constant theme. It changes towards the end of the movie, but uh, during this time, it's mainly just Ernest trying to get the trust of the kids. Which I mean, you even have that part where they they go like, "Oh, first aid," <laughs> where they get to wrap him up in uh, bandages. Yeah. But you have that where they uh, beat him in cards and rip him off or when he's hurt and they end up taking him poison ivy as a gift. <laughs> Which, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I've never really been given poison ivy as a gift in a pot. Uh, nope. No, no. No, nope, I... but the doctor puts the kids in check for that one. Yeah, she does that twice uh, in the movie. Uh, once at, once there, and then the other time is at the end to let them know, it's like, look, he's doing everything he can to, uh, you know, to try and keep them from going back. <laughs> right, yeah. She's and, like, you know, you know, no one else wanted to even know you, and he, you know, doing everything he can, yeah. And the uh, I'll admit the if he was even half the expert on nature he claimed to be, <laughs> he definitely should have had second thoughts about getting that poison ivy that close to his face. Because I'll admit, not everyone can identify poison ivy on sight, but you should know the basics and be wary of something now. I know what they used in the film, and what they used in the film was a, a type of grapevine that's tropical and looks like poison ivy, but it's, uh, as far as their native choices, yeah, he probably should have suspected something, but he and, didn't, and he got a face full of it, which would have not been pleasant. If you're working in a camp, you learn to identify, shoot, if you're doing any yeah anything like that you learn to identify those plants like right off <laughs> well, well you mentioned scouts earlier that is definitely an early scout yeah. lesson is how to identify poison <laughs> got plenty of it here <laughs> yep in fact if he wants to smell it he can have all of mine <laughs> <laughs> but uh the 
Of course, with that, they do have one point where they do finally bond together, which is when they're doing that competition where they decide, okay, well, they're about to give up at the start, but Ernest gets them to go ahead and do it, which is to make a a realistic uh, looking Indian teepee. Uh, Again, you know, doesn't hold up very well, but (laughs) moving it on. You know, I mean, that's the kind of thing that, you know, I would have been doing if I was when I was a kid during that time. So I can definitely understand where it comes from. And then the right. uh, and then, of course, they find out the other kids kind of burn it down, which, uh, my goodness, they, they definitely are almost comedically evil <laughs> in some cases. <laughs> right. I mean, between oh, yeah, the, kids that aren't, the kids that aren't the second chance. Are actually worse than the kids that are the second chance. You know? I know a lunch tray fight scene. I mean, where they just when Ernest tries to get up in the middle of it, and they all just stop fighting each other, and they're all just like, "We'll all hit Ernest instead." <laughs> you know, interesting side note about that one. Uh, of course, this being a movie that we grew up on that we loved, we had the old VHS copy of this, and we had you know for years, and I don't know how many times we saw uh, saw that. But I remember very distinctly that at some point, the VHS failed. Uh, I can't remember exactly when, or or and I don't feel like it ever got any worse. But there was one point where the tape just kind of, you know how in old VHS tapes, sometimes things would kind of, you get that kind of slowdown, and it um, maybe kind of almost slows the volume, like it slows down the uh, the the voice gets distorted, and what have you. And on this tape, it happened to distort at exactly the moment when he was going back into the coke machine, and as it fell on top of him, so it was like in on this tape, it was like. It, he, it was almost, he went into the machine in slow motion and then it fell on top. And I just, I just thought that was kind of hilarious that the tape did that. <laughs> uh, that would be a, that's a Home Alone uh, instant death uh, thing right there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there are a couple of times where Ernest should have died probably during. That. Ernest is dead. Ernest, <laughs> have they have done an honest action for this? Uh, I don't even know if they still do those anymore, but I know that it was, uh, but this one would be one of those that you could. I remember the Home Alone one. Marv is dead. Harry is dead. Marv is dead. Marv is dead. (laughs) One of those bricks alone to the head from that two story would have taken him out. (laughs) But uh, as we go along in the movie, of course, Ernest uh, is caught with the, uh, with the big villain, talking to the chief and he helps translate uh, basically the villain lies to the chief and gets him to sign the document and Ernest helps him get that signed. Mm -hmm. So then they say, okay, now it's time to move out. (laughs) It should be noted that that lawyer slimy though he was respected the fact that they kept turning him down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Sherman Crater, the John Vernon character, who would not take no for an answer. And he kept sending the lawyer back. And then finally, this was when he just said, you're you're worthless to me. I'm going to do it myself, basically. (laughs) And he gets it done, uh, but not so ethically, which you find out later on when they get the injunction at the end of the movie. Because, yeah, he didn't probably do it legally. They coerced instead, so... Um, he straight up lied. Yeah, he straight up told her, and this is this is the part that's rich. He told Ernest that he was with the basically the DEQ. Essentially, that wasn't the term he used, but it might as well have been. And he told them about the strip mining operation, and made it sound like they were fighting against them. <laughs> Talk about misrepresenting yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, he said it was uh, that paper was like a petition. Yeah. Against it. 
Now, bad on Ernest for not reading a few sentences of it, but still. <laughs> but would he have really? <laughs> uh, but um, I mean, it probably was in legalese that even your average person would have trouble with. Never mind, a complete moron. So, of course, the kids aside, I'm not going. And uh, I that's where you also get the uh, the song, which, of course, was my reason for making the selection. Because, mm -hmm. of course, to me, I feel like uh, this is a song, whenever I think about being blue, this is one of the songs that comes to mind. According to some of the uh, trivia on it, uh, he got the song, he actually sang the song perfect on one take. And uh, that there was reportedly not a dry eye in the house. Now I admit, um, when I listened to this, I got a little bit sadder, but that was because, mm -hmm. but I also was going through a lot that week. So uh, my emotions weren't exactly there. But uh, since this is the scene that attaches uh, to feeling blue uh, the most, what did y'all think of that song? You totally fell for you totally fell for Ernest after that song, you know. No matter what you would have thought of him or whatever for, you know, during the movie before that, you know, you totally fell for him after that. That's it. So, yeah, it's definitely for me that song enormous nostalgia value. Like we've said before on here, that music can carry like just tremendous nostalgia it can amplify things tremendously um but i just i feel like the song was perfectly placed in the movie it was a great emotional outlet you know you have all this slapstick comedy but then you have this one moment of like real heart uh even though there is heart in the rest of the film but like here it's right at the surface um and yeah you absolutely feel for him at that moment <laughs> Uh, what about the rest of y'all that uh, that didn't like the movie? Uh, but what did y'all think of the song? Which song? Uh, the one where he's singing when it's raining. The uh, oh, yeah, I'm glad it's raining. He has a good voice. Yeah, it's weird he didn't do more singing. I was a little surprised about that, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it, well, that part was I did not expect was actually it was very actually very unexpected. I to say, I mean, I always thought that, that one always sticks out for me. It's one of two parts in the movie that that stick out. The other part is just because my father kept mentioning it over and over again when I was a kid, uh, and even as an adult. Uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but with that being said, you know. Ernest, of course, that's after Ernest decides he's upset with them and he gets basically his butt handed to him by the construction. Well, one particular member of the construction crew. <laughs> and I don't quite understand why the second chance kids thought that he was going to beat the guy up and were upset when he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Considering how much bigger the other guy was. <laughs> well, they're not too bright either. Well, I think they, um, they, they, he was showing all this spirit and all this, like, he, he was talking a big game. And I guess maybe they thought, you know, he, you know, guys like that can be pretty scrappy in a fight, you know, <laughs> but this, yeah, but yeah, the guy he was up against was, I mean, I, I can't remember the actor's name offhand, but he actually was a former football player, um, a former pro athlete. He he was a big guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but I do like that they that after another one of those talks by the doctor, that uh, that it motivates the kids to motivate Ernest, and they decide they're going to fight. That mm -hmm. they're going to take it down. They then they do an A team inspired yes. uh session where they rip apart a uh great a, montage a bus and they just like go for it creating weapons uh, and i i will give it this most of the stuff that they used were callbacks to a lot of the comedic uh scenes earlier in the movie and i liked how they did that 
Yeah. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but almost every item that was used as weaponry uh, was something that basically Ernest got beat down by earlier yeah. on in the film. Including his turtle. <laughs> Including I just got to say that. He even got bit by his turtle. <laughs> Crocky, you bit me on the nose. <laughs> What do y'all think of the whole uh, uh, A team montage where they're all together in there? Where, where they got a big blasting 80s theme, Brave Hearts by Gary Chapman. That was, that was a gr- it was a great montage sequence. I, I, I love it. But you also get here's where you see uh, Jake and Eddie are fighting back too. You see them skulking around trying to do their thing. Uh, so that's kind of. They're moving around in the woods with yeah, that big a couple of <laughs> Yeah. But th- th- yeah, they really start to go to town on them uh, at that point with the uh, different things. You've got the, uh, you've got the uh, lanterns, you've got the flaming arrows that they put on the explosives, uh, the blowing yeah. up the toilet. And of course the turtle paratroopers, which is, um, which was my fa- father's favorite part of the movie each time where, where the guy's even calling in. It's like, it's like the cap, everything's on fire. The turtle paratroopers have got us everywhere. Like turtle. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and again, I admit this is an example. You know how sometimes quotes get crossed in your brain and whatever. And the, and, and I don't remember um, exactly what the quote was. Is it, like, um, is death from above something, but in my brain, it was death from above. Know what I mean? You know, and that was what it was stuck in my brain from when I was a kid. And that is something that has been a phrase I've used many a time over the years. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the film does have some good quotes here and there. Yeah, like when they, Mr. Tipton, the, the the head counselor, offers him the job, he asks him, have you ever held a leadership position? Well, I had an ant farm once. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was fun. But anyway. Well, they managed to finally, uh, they managed to uh, do a nice uh, attack sequence. Um, of course, the, they fight back by having the big guy going in with that giant bull, the bulldozer type thing uh, and ripping down buildings. But uh, they managed to finally get that golf cart that, that is a recurring character throughout the movie ever since it gets away from Ernest. Uh, must have one hell of a gas tank. Um <laughs> Yeah, my my brother was like uh, made a comment when we finished this. Something like, uh, "Man, I'd like to have that or something." And I was like, "Oh yeah, talk about fuel economy." That's a- <laughs> <laughs> it. Ran the entire film. <laughs> they loaded up with explosives, ram it into the thing. It blows up, and then Ernest, of course, does the final blow to the guy who's like half out of it anyway when he comes out. And yet, that golf thing still. Is plugging along after it's after the movie is over. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does the the casualty is the uh, is the meal generator that they have. <laughs> um. Yeah but- the um, the guy the big guy comes along with his big machine and smashes that thing to bits, and uh, Jake and Eddie are so upset. But you, you got to admit, having that thing blasting all that shit at you, that's got to be a demoralizing weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they they they, uh, they tried to uh, do different things. And, of course, when they're putting the little officers, like, no, no, not me. Me too. Yes, you. <laughs> and right. they, of course, the, the big bad guy shows up with the gun is like, Screw this! I'm just killing him off. Uh, but uh, apparently, Ernest uh, gains the power of the brave and is unable to be hit by the bullets. Right. Uh, as he puts his finger in the uh, rifle at the end of it. <laughs> it's it's. I guess it's worth saying the um, what the the um, tradition was, which was um, if he had faith in the great one, the knife would not cut him. 
If he had courage, true courage, the rock would not break him. If the brave was pure of heart, the arrow could not catch him. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, and Ernest is just standing there, you know, and Crater can't hit him. We've already established earlier that Crater is a good shot. He definitely would not have been missing on purpose. But, but and then, uh, of course, he gets close enough, and Ernest sticks his finger right in the barrel of the gun. Hey, <laughs> Bob, man. Yeah. Bug funny <laughs> style. Yeah, as he says, rock, paper, scissors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, never mind that a, a rifle has just been fired three times. It's probably going to be pretty hot at the tip, but, you know. <laughs> oh, nothing Ernest can't handle. <laughs> right. But, uh, of course, at that point, the police arrive, as they do. They tend to arrive after yes, all the is over. And, of course, uh, he's arrested for trying to, you know, kill Ernest and uh, everybody else. And, of course, they're putting a stop on the demolishing the camp because uh, things didn't seem right. Uh, and everything is, is good at the end. They are wrapping up the summer. Uh, Ernest is feeling better and he's back at that sign again. Uh, but instead of just falling himself, the sign falls on him. Yeah. <laughs> and of course you get to end with that line. Well, at least nobody was hurt. <laughs> well, before that, you had, I think, the only time in the movie that the chief's uh, words were actually translated is that Ernest broke the sign. <laughs> and then the guy, broke the yeah. sign. Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, it does. Well. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I am uh, preposterously late. Well, um, we're we have uh, just reached about the end of the uh, the whole, except for that one scene in the credits where they feed the guy eggs erroneous, and then uh, uh, he turns into this. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, uh, um, I couldn't figure that out. That confused me. But I think um, it always confused me growing up. But now I kind of I, I I kind of figured it was just that sort of. It's so good; it makes you sing. I guess is the idea. <laughs> I see. About his condo. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, before we uh, end um, end plots discussion, uh, Dustin, uh, what was your first experience uh, watching uh, Ernest Goes to Camp? Well, I didn't think I had ever seen any uh, Ernest movies before. Although somebody, uh, actually it was you, Forrest, um, I mentioned, yeah. hey, what was today's movie? And yeah. uh, I mentioned Ernest. And um, apparently I have seen Ernest Saves Christmas and just did not realize that, that movie in my memory was Ernest Saves Christmas. It was like, yeah, oh, we covered that a couple years ago. We did it a few years ago. Yeah. 20 back in 2020. Oh, I may have been missing for that. Like I was, I was in the middle oh. of moving behind. All right. But, um, uh, yeah. So, uh, I was like, you know, I, I should see at least one Ernest movie, uh, and I saw this for the first time today. Uh, I had a pretty good time with it. I don't remember really a lot of details, so probably not such a bad thing I missed uh, most of the discussion, because uh, I don't know if I would have had anything really intelligent to contribute. But I had a great time with this. This was an above, this felt like an above average kind of 90s kids movie. And I think that's more or less what it was, right? Uh, eight late eighties. Late eighties, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Fits in that same basic vein. <laughs> I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure what the time frame was for the Ernest movies because I, uh, well, like I said, um, I, I missed so much of them. I would say well, late this 80s, was the late... first official one, and yeah. Scared Stupid, I think, was ninety four. So that was the range 91. of the good ones, and then they kind of petered out in the late nineties. You, you, you're not missing much with most of those. <laughs> Yep, yep. I would say just. Think, I mean, if you're gonna watch the Ernest movies, I would say. I mean, even though I like that this movie was just average at best, but I would say stick with the stick with the Disney with the Disney era. Okay. But yeah, yeah th those four are the best ones to see. The Ernest goes to camp. Ernest goes to jail. Ernest scared stupid. And Ernest saves Christmas. You, you catch those, you're, you're in good. <laughs> How many yeah. more are there? Lots. There's like a, a few, there's a number, a lot of, quite a few. There's like, uh, let's see, there's those first four movies. Okay, Rods uh, again. Five, no six, six, seven, eight, nine of them. 
Oh, oh, damn. Do you do one every year for a while or what? Um, um, like every year, every other year. Yeah, they had actually said he was working on one the year he died, but wow. they didn't get very far into filming. So I'm sure there's some scenes somewhere, but uh, I mean, did they uh, even start filming. I, hmm. I can't remember what the one was. I remember that the title sounded interesting. Hmm. You know, you'd have, you know, you'd have done one in space eventually. <laughs> I did, I did <laughs> go to space eventually. Or what? Watch, watch it have Ben Ernest in space. I mean, Pinhead got to go to space. Jason got to go to space. I mean, Leprechaun, Leprechaun James Bond, Bond. To to space. Like, damn. I mean, right. it, was, it was his time, I guess. Uh, uh, and to go to space, not to like die. Sadly, uh, yeah. Awkward. Anyway, so I, I had a pretty good time with this. I thought it was. I thought it was fun. Um, had the potential for, I think, maybe some not age well moments that it managed to completely skirt, which I was pleased with. Uh, and uh, yeah, this was this was good. I had a good time. So I'm happy you guys made me see this, and I'm happy that I remembered at the last moment to boot it up. <laughs> Yeah. It's not easy to find these days, at least as far as on streaming, as far as oh, yeah. that goes. But um, yeah. I think it is pretty, I think it is available uh, commercially on physical. It's still, I think it's still in print. I'm reasonably sure that yeah. it can be it's, found. I believe on a triple pack with uh, uh, Scared Stupid and Goes to Jail. Yeah. That one's that one's also out of print, but it is still selling for around thirty bucks, which is you know there. I mean, yeah, there's some Blu-rays. Uh, there's one that's got, uh, yeah, th there's a, uh, yeah, with the prices I'm seeing, they're out of print, but they're it's out of print in the way that you can buy it, but definitely you're paying more than what you should. <laughs> Price sounds about right, probably. Yeah, but uh, which is kind of sad. I would love to see a good, a full, like, earnest collection in the future one day, right? Uh, but, um, any other, I could see this being uh, something shout maybe would do, like, a big earnest oh, yeah. set or something. I think the issue is Disney's ownership on it, yeah. Yeah, well, Shout did get to release Gravity Falls, and that's Disney, so that's true, it's this possible. I could see a shout Ernest collection. I mean, it it would be something they would do. <laughs> something they probably could do, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Who knows what's coming up? I mean, we have we have a lot of stuff on the way from Shout. I'm like sure. the releases the last couple of years or so have been kind of mixed because um, a lot of things just got 4K upgrades instead of being new titles. But the new titles that they did get, damn, wow. So, um, I mean, maybe maybe this is in the cards for them. I could ask on Twitter, see if they actually say something. Yeah, that'd be an interesting yeah. thing. I mean, uh, like I say, I mean, shoot. Otto, Dr. Otto and the Gloom Beam, for instance, which was one of the first uh, movies, full-on movies. Like I said, uh, my family album was the very first Ernest movie, but it was one of the first movies to include Ernest, even though Ernest was the bad guy in that one. Which is kind of an odd thing. That isn't. That is the probably the rarest one. <laughs> I can't which get my one? head around the concept of Ernest being a villain. Wait, which one? Wait, which one? <laughs> right. it's, a, it's a movie called uh, Doctor Otto and the Gloom Beam. Oh, you're right, right. But uh, technically, it's not Ernest, but it's the form. But Ernest is one of the forms that the alien, the evil alien doctor thing takes. Right. I, I do see he's on the uh, post. He's on the poster art for it. Hmm. But um, wild. Uh, well, uh, if there's yeah, if there anything else, I'm oh, sorry. Back to uh, your plot discussion and how we are right at the very end of it. Um, let's back up. Any any other plot? Uh, anything else on the plot that anyone wants to talk about before we move on to production design? Uh, I guess not. Oh, production design. Um, <laughs> A lot of this, you know, you've got a lot of production angles here because you've got the camp setting, you've got all the various uh, gags, and you got the the one Rue Goldberg machine. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a, and of course all the stuff they did at the end. 
But what did John a turtle, think? Like the turtles biting all the biting all, biting all those construction workers. <laughs> <laughs> that was orchestrated pretty good. I'll, uh, uh, I'll say more on it in my favorite section. Uh, but any any words uh, to y'all about the uh, production design? I think overall it's effective. I mean, again, it gives you that kind of summer camp vibe uh, pretty well. Um, I mean, it didn't feel cheap. It definitely didn't feel low budget. I mean, yeah. like, I I've seen too many micro-budget movies to say... <laughs> Right. This was, wasn't a huge budget by any means, but no. <laughs> but there's a lot of production value for, for for it. For 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 its budget. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um there isn't anything that looks like out of place or uh, anything. It's it's kind of hard to put into words i mean like production value it's one of those things where when it's fine it's fine so you don't notice anything about it right it's serviceable yeah even one, that, one uh, thing they can find to me too for example and i was kind of kind of really glaring at it so i think one thing that could probably fall into this category uh it could be costuming as well and i just bring it up because you know brandon you made that point of gee i'm glad it's raining being your reason for nominating this mm -hmm. you could say as well you could kind of stretch dave's definition a little bit and point out that ernest is always dressed in blue and gray yep, that <laughs> is true he is indeed he is sort of a blue character. <laughs> De yep, all that denim. Yep. <laughs> um. So what about music? This movie should get more love for the music. Just straight up. <laughs> it's got like five original songs by Shane Keister and Alice Keister. And we already talked about, gee, I'm glad it's raining. And then you got your montage song, Brave Hearts. Mm -hmm. um, there were three others in there, too. We're going to win this one, Doing Time, Lost Without Love. Uh, as well as a well-placed use of the turtles, Happy Together. Uh, I think that worked well with the turtles. Yeah. On the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, just great use of music generally in this movie. And... Uh, I just really think, though, that they should have had an Oscar nod or two for those songs. <laughs> and, you know, what's interesting is that that timed also around the same time that song was being utilized for a Golden Grams commercial. Because <laughs> going around. Which one? Uh, the uh, the Turtles song. Oh, oh right. I always associated with uh, commercials for Super, for Super Smash Brothers. I see that was later years, but I'm thinking in the late '80s when I was watching TV, and I would see those Golden Grams commercials come up. I don't and, remember that with those commercials, but that's not saying much. Well, I mean, I was around age eight when I first saw this film, so you know, and, and many of y'all are much younger than me. So <laughs> when I remember hearing that song, some of y'all that are older than me probably remember that Golden Grams commercial. <laughs> Or those of you that are same age as I am, but yeah. I mean, I'm 35 and I barely remember Golden Grams. So, uh, damn. Uh, really, I, 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 mean, I, I, I barely remember Golden Grams. I'm the same age as you, Dustin. I grew up eating gold, Golden Grams for breakfast. I was going to say, I, I, I did too. I haven't seen them for a long time. I can't remember quite what they taste like. I used to love them when I was a kid. Can't same say I here. eat them much now. I don't even, even eat cereal at all. Ironically, I can remember what Batman 1989 cereal tasted like. Oh, <laughs> I remember the old Nintendo cereal that they had where they had the Zelda and the Mario. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I had Batman 89 cereal, but I had the Batman Returns cereal. Or the Mr. T one. I like the Mr. T cereal. I remember the Mr. T one. Too. Was I was the Ewan Kiwi Hermit. Hermit. <laughs> I it too. Like, that was That's basically a weird like with marshmallows. It was like checks mixed with Lucky Charms. Mm. Really strange. When I was a kid, I liked Cookie Crisp. <laughs> well, uh, with that tension out of the way, um, anything else on the music? It's good. Music was better than the movie. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was weird hearing Jim Varney sing. Uh, uh, that's 
It was, yeah, but he had a good voice, so. I think, I think if anything, even if you don't care much for the character of Ernest, I think that that scene uh, where he's singing that song is still a very effective scene uh, for the most part. Usually uh, mm -hmm. pulls a little on heartstrings. If you, have, if you have a heart to have it pulled. <laughs> but, uh, right. that, but that's, uh, I guess, it for our Ernest discussion. Other than the well, uh, favorite mm. scenes. So I will tell you what. Let's let's do two things here. What is your favorite scene, and who is your favorite character in the movie? Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll start with. Uh, actually, we'll start with you, Ron. Is this who is? What was your favorite scene, and who is your favorite character? I don't have a favorite character or a favorite scene. Although I guess the the song was a little touching, so maybe that. Oh, there you. Although go. when he got. When Ernest got beat up by the by the by the construction worker it was pretty funny. So maybe it was the construction worker that was your favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of an ass, but you know. No, was, for me, he was, uh, was beating up Ernie. <laughs> I didn't want to step on anybody's toes, so I just wanted to make sure I said it before I like forgot. Oh, go ahead, go yeah. ahead, Justin. Favorite uh, character, favorite scene. Uh, I think I just liked all of the reform school kids. Uh, like they, they were all, they were all, they were a fun unit to like watch, just kind of interact with like that sort of preppy camp. And my favorite scene is actually that little one in the mess hall when they, they trip like the, the shorter kid, the, when the, uh, the camp kids trip the shorter kid and the, and the rest of his friends were like, Hey, what was that? And it's like, Oh, it was an accident, accident, huh? And then he just like throws his tray on like the one kid. And it's like, oh, it looks like I had an accident too. And then the other guy just like leans over and like flips the, the, kid, the other kid's drink onto him. It's like, ah, oh, something's going around. Yeah, they start that whole duel with the trays. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't know. It was just kind of like, uh, it, it felt like, um, I don't know. I, I like stuff like that where like there's kind of like a bad group of people, but they still stick up for each other. So I, I, I kind of like that trope. So. Uh, let's see here. Um, well, let's go to you, uh, Forrest. Uh, favorite character, favorite scene? Let's see. Favorite character, I mean, Marissa, I mean, I mean, even though, again, I don't have that I, or that much. Actually, I would say, maybe not favorite character in terms of likability, but like, but uh, John Vernon is, but, uh, but Sherman Crater, I mean, yeah, he's a villain, but John Vernon, he can't, uh, he's always great. As, he, oh, he's always a great slime ball. Uh, and then favorite scene, um, ooh, I'd probably even say the turtle bombing or, uh, at the end or probably, yeah, I agree the food fight, you know, the cafeteria was, scene was pretty good too. All right. Uh, so Dave, favorite oh, yeah. this did have Officer Mahoney from Killer Clowns in it, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> you mean, uh, Dean Wormer. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's always such a dick. Like, I've never seen yeah. him be a nice character. <laughs> <laughs> So, Dave, favorite character, favorite scene? <laughs> favorite character was the turtle. <laughs> um, and anything, anything the turtles did, uh, did uh, I think uh, the parachuting turtles was my favorite scene. Uh, and I would have to say the toilet bomb was kind of a second favorite. And... I guess I kind of got, uh, got a kick out of the, uh, the riding lawnmower, just ke uh, keeping on going and going and going like the Energizer buddy. All right. Let's see here. Uh, Tammy, favorite character, favorite scene? Uh, my favorite character, I like the little guy. I think they called him Moose. All right. Mustafa. I liked him. I just because, you know, he he was the first one to actually befriend Ernest and I think it was because of him that the other kids started to realize you know, that Ernest was really on their side you know and he kept he kept trying to be helpful to Ernest you know and be there for him you know like a friend so I just I thought he was a neat little guy um favorite scene and uh, I gotta go with everybody else. I love the little the bombing the turtle bombers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. We have a turtle. How could I not like the turtles? Oh yeah. 
And so. Colonel Paratroopers. <laughs> so how, Frankie away. <laughs> how about you, Jake? Favorite scene, favorite character? Well, um, I've got to say, uh, I mean, it's tempting to say Ernest because, you know, Ernest, uh, you know, how, how could you even have this series really without him? He's, he's the glue that holds it all together. And he is, I think, a very likable character. Uh, like I said, there's also that, just that I've always been a big fan of Jim Varney. Um, the, with this movie specifically, I'm very tempted to say Jake and Eddie. They're... Their eternal quest for the perfect eggs erroneous is just, <laughs> I just find that hilarious. I, I have always loved that whole thing. And um, interesting side note, uh, I think Forrest may have been the one someone brought up last week that unfortunately most of the cast of Blues Brothers is no longer with us. The same unfortunately can be said of this movie. Most yeah, of the kids are still here. The adults. And Jake and Eddie are still alive, but all the other leads, all of them, uh, Jim Varney, Varney John, Vernon, John Vernon, uh, Victoria Racimo, Iron Eyes Cody, Lyle yeah. Osato, who's that big burly uh, guy on the, you know, the... Um, right. They're, they're all passed. That's but Gaylord Sertin and Daniel Butler are still alive, so maybe we'll see the long-awaited okay. sequel... Uh, Jake and Eddie, the continued quest for eggs erroneous. <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, interesting. Uh, but as far as favorite scenes, there's a lot of great moments in this film. There's a lot of stuff that I find just great. The this scene where they're first talking to Ernest about the eggs erroneous, the, the G I'm glad it's raining scene. Um, but I think if I had to pick one that has always, from when I was a kid, gotten me wound up and still does, it's probably that whole big confrontation at the end, the whole big rebellion at the end, the, the montage with brave hearts where they're all putting everything together, the uh, the part where they're fighting uh, in a, every way they know how, Jake and Eddie included, uh, right up to the part where where um, John Vernon shows up and and just can't hit Ernest. Uh, that whole sequence, um, and yes, including the turtle paratroopers. Um, although apparently John Cherry insisted on live turtles, and Disney said absolutely not. Yeah. And so Cherry went behind Disney and had a bunch of people collect turtles anyway. And so there actually were live turtles used. And so I have issues with that. Um, right. And this was like, and this was and back in the, like back in the eighties was, was when uh, Hollywood started to crack down on right. uh, treatment of animals and film shoot on film sets. Right. So I feel really bad for any turtles that were injured or killed in this movie. And there probably were a few, but. I still love, and again, Death from Above, that one line I will always remember. I'll always associate with this movie. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, they, like I said, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot for me, but I, I think those will probably be my picks. <laughs> yeah, for me, um, of course, yeah, be it uh, Jake and Eddie or Chuck and Bobby, uh, even though Bobby was uh, a different character, it's still right. a similar, it was still the same concept that uh, this is kind of where that concept was birthed, really. Uh, I've always loved that duo combination because, uh, well, Eddie was replaced by Bobby, essentially, whereas the same actor was uh, from Chuck to, uh, uh, I mean, Chuck and the and you know and jake right but uh still it was great seeing them uh whenever they're working together or whether really it's it's great when you see that actor working off of the other actor in there whatever duo it is and i like most of the scenes in this i mean this is uh though it's not it's one of my favorite nostalgia piece movies 
I don't think it's my favorite movie, but it's definitely one of my favorite nostalgic movies. And uh, I would say probably that whole battle scene at the end would be my favorite, but I mean, you can't deny the power of the turtle paratroopers. They just are, they're just too powerful. <laughs> but uh, just hear him see the hear the guy panicking on the phone. It's like the paratro turtle paratroopers have us all paralyzed. Like, turtle, what? <laughs> uh, but with that, uh, that is uh, Ernest goes to camp. So we've had uh, quite a discussion here, and uh, I'll let uh, Dave take us to the outros. All righty. Uh, why don't I start with you, Dustin? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Well, uh, I collect horror movie stuff on my YouTube channel, Look at the Horrors, which I am working on reviving and was doing pretty good at making new videos and getting them out until a uh, really terrible personal crisis kind of ruined it uh, last week. Um, but we're getting back to it and uh, just trying to heal pretty much. <laughs> So I uh, should have some new stuff for everybody pretty soon. Uh, and that's about it. So you can find me on YouTube at The Crypt of Horrors. And you can also find me on Instagram, also at The Crypt of Horrors. And uh, it's the name of my Instagram as well, uh, The Crypt of Horrors, which I think I just said twice in a row. I'm not even sure anymore. <laughs> up is down. Everything is mixed up. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter as Duracryptaxis. I hang out a lot there if you ever want to hear more of my opinions. And I am also uh, working on actually using my letterbox. So you can follow me there as Cryptaxis. Uh, I've managed to hit at least one horror movie every day of January so far. And I'm hoping to keep the trend up. So right. yeah, it'll be a good time. Heading over to you, Ron. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, well, I'm uh, dis disabled, so I don't work. But I'm uh, I watch TV, watch movies, play video games, read books, um, and I come on uh, these podcasts, this uh, podcast, and one on Sunday with uh, Dave and Tammy, and uh, I enjoy talk about uh, the movies I watch, uh, even uh, even the ones I don't I don't uh, care for that much. <laughs> it's uh, still fun to come in on the discussion and uh, hear what everyone has to say about it and, uh, you know, maybe gleam a little bit of a different opinion sometimes. Uh, not really with this one, but <laughs> other times I have. Uh, but, yeah, that's a uh, bit me in, in a nutshell. All righty. Heading over to you, Forrest. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right. I'm, uh, my name is Forrest Bennett. I'm an independent film producer, actor based in Long Island, New York. You can also find me on uh, – find uh, I've got a few projects coming out soon. Uh, Camp Blood – latest entry of the Camp Blood franchise. Uh, Promas Bring on the Damned. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram under my name is not Gump, where I do comic book pickups. Um, and I've always got – and I'm also, on, an, I'm also on, a, on a show here in New York called Under the Radar, where we do movie and television reviews. We actually just did – we just reviewed uh, – the new avatar earlier, earlier today as, as well as a retrospective on James Cameron's career. And, uh, all, and, uh, I've always got something going on in the pipeline. All righty. Uh, heading over to you, Tammy. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Well, I'm David's fiance. I go on this channel and another and, um, <laughs> on Sunday with, um, the one on Sundays with Crowell and another friend of ours, Boris. And then I come out here and we talk about movies and I have my own collections. And um, in the summer, I have my, I have my car that I take out and I've recently joined a car club. So it sounds like when summer hits, I'm going to have a lot of fun. All righty. Heading over to you, Jake. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right, I'm Claude Buki Jake. I'm the co host of Septum Sim vs. World on YouTube. And uh, I am also a uh, big movie. F oh, man. I'm oh, sorry about that. 
movie fan and collector and uh, general media fan and collector here in Central Virginia. Uh, I also have a full-time gig. Uh, keeps me pretty busy most of the time and have a, another gig as a co-founder of a local native plant nursery, RVA Homegrown Natives. Uh, but I do still try to find time for viewing and reading and just general enjoyment of media, including time for to come on this channel and uh, talk with you fine folks about uh, <clears throat> what this month has been a very interesting assortment of movies, and I guess will continue to be a very interesting assortment of movies. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, seeing what else we have in store this month. Alrighty, heading over to you, uh, Brandon. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, I'm Septum Sen of Septum Sen versus the World. We love our physical media here. Uh, we are, uh, we had to take a bit of a break last week, but we are back in action. Um, I was able to post uh, my first impression for that uh, out there Halloween uh, tape, which was a really good movie uh, overall. Um, also, uh, we have a collector's guide for Anhedinia Films uh, for those who are interested coming out this week, which is going to be fun. And, of course, a Voltron discussion. Um, it's not next week, but it'll be week after next on the 31st. So going to be fun there. That'll be uh, something Ron is leading us in, as a matter of fact. <laughs> So that's going to be an interesting discussion for anime uh, group. Um, as far as uh, my work here, I also work with Inside Movies Galore to help uh, uh, work with the schedules. And we have we just recently got our schedule set for February, but y'all will have to wait a little bit longer for you to figure that one out. Um, and I also do work with Schlockaholics, where we did a recent discussion on the Anhedinia film The Cajones Virus, which was a very fun film. Uh, we all enjoyed that and even had the director on to discuss with us. So you should check that out. Uh, next week, we have another film that Jake will lead the discussion on uh, for this channel uh, called Lilo and Stitch. It's a little known independent film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty. Is that it then? Yep, yep. All righty. It's an independent is... film? <laughs> he was joking. Oh. <laughs> uh, I've but... never seen it, but, you know, I, I've i I've heard of it and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, uh, but my name is David Streggy. I'm one of the founding fathers of Inside Movies Galore, so hopefully you have checked us out along our, uh, I believe this is our, uh, sixth year be, uh, being on uh, online or or whatnot. So uh, definitely check out some of our earlier episodes. Uh, but I also moonlight under a different channel called Delusions of Grandeur, where I also go on and uh, podcast under said title. But I go on from time to time and uh, 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 do some video pickups and uh, video thoughts on uh, some of the films that uh, I watch and uh, would love if uh, any one of you out there would check uh, the cha uh, channel out. Uh, we have a lot of fun on uh, 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 Sundays, Ron and uh, Tammy and Boris. Uh, and I think we cover a lot of movies uh, there as well as here. So um, definitely like, share, and subscribe. Let us know down in the comments uh, what you thought of our discussion, and we'll see you back next week with, I believe, Lilo and Stitch, uh, like uh, Brandon said. So catch you next uh, time, and hopefully you'll be following along with us as we go a little bit more blue. <laughs> So everyone say good night. Uh, good, good night, night everyone. Know what I mean? Good night. Night.